all of us as human beings desire to flourish in life, ministry, and in family. We want to thrive and prosper. But which kind of prosperity and flourishing do we desire? I like to state categorically that there is the flourishment that is brought by man's endeavors and desire. And there is flourishment that comes from God. More often than not, life is about flourishing and flopping. It's better to flop while doing the will of God than to flourish while doing the desires of man. I want to say that prosperity gospel that has been preached shows flourishment of ministry. Opalence, vehicles, and even flashy dressing, and sometimes prohibitively expensive lifestyle outside the reach of humanity. This gospel, the health and wealth gospel, has been propagated as a measure of flourishment in ministry. Sometimes positions have been presented as a case for flourishment in ministry. And sometimes achievement of things that we can line up has been shown to be the mark of flourishment in ministry. If that is the case, I'll say that that flourishment does not emanate from the Bible. Let me tell you the story of Judas Iscariot. Judas Iscariot, by human standards, was considered to be a disciple who had flourished. Why? He was the, he was the treasurer of the disciples of Jesus Christ. He was a zealot, considered a person who manifested the Jewish nationalism. The other thing that I can say about Judas, he was a bit, he was considered to have flourished in ministry. But in actual sense, he flopped. Why did he flop? He did not have integrity as a treasure. According to the gospel, according to John, he took the money and helped himself with. Number two, he did not succeed. He sold Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Maybe he desired Jesus to confront with the Jewish authority and to establish God's kingdom. For the truth be said, he flopped. Today I want to tell you that the story of Jesus after the feeding of the 5,000 in the book of Matthew, chapter 14, verses 22 to 23, tells us of the two realities, the flopping and the, the flopping and the flourishing in ministry. And I want to say, Jesus, after feeding the 5,000, people wanted to make him a king straight away. They wanted him to flourish. The disciples suffered the moment with glee and expectations. They did not want to depart. Jesus constrained them to go to the lake. And when they went to the lake, he went to the mountain. He also dispersed the crowd who wanted to crown him king. The truth of the matter, he did not want to flop and to be made king in God's, in man's way. A crown without the cross. S success without sweat. Achievement without the right attitudes. That is flopping in ministry. Therefore, Jesus constrained them to go. And as they left, they were alone in the sea, dark at night, and there were a lot of superstitions that the ghosts of the people who drowned in sea attacked people at night. Therefore, as there were storms that are depictive of the storms of life, 
Jesus was in the hill. We know from systematic theology that Jesus emptied himself of his glory. And maybe he was limited. He could not, while as a human being, in human flesh, he could not be omnipresent. But he was omniscient. He knew everything. So as they went into the sea, into the lake, there was a furious storm depictive of the turbulence of life. And they could not see properly. Jesus came to rescue them. It is only how we respond to Jesus that will determine whether we flop or whether we flourish in ministry. Jesus comes. And I want to talk about Paul, Peter. Peter, the greatest among the disciples, the leader. He flopped, but he also flourished in ministry. Let me talk about Peter today. Peter, Simon, the name depictive of the rock. Petra, a small stone. But Petros is Christ, the cornerstone of the church and the foundation of the church. So Jesus comes. Peter is in a boat, shaken. But Jesus, Peter, flourished when he first recognized Jesus. He recognized Jesus and he obeyed his commands. According to Soren Kierkegaard, the melancholic Dutch, a great theologian and thinker, he said faith is a leap into the unknown. Peter leaped by trusting in God. And by faith, he said, if you are the Lord, please tell me to come and walk over water. We flourish in ministry, number one, when we obey Christ's command to come and follow him. He forgives us our sins. That is the first step of flourishing. We acknowledge Christ. We obey his command. Here is calling. Serve him wherever he calls us to be. Number two, we flourish in ministry when we decide to do the impossible task. William Carey, the father of modern mission, said, expect great things from God, but attempt great things for God. Peter attempted the great thing to God's glory. He walked on top of water. We have never been called to a walk in the park. Neither is ministry a bed of roses or family or life. But we are called to attempt great things. And we flourish when we take a step of faith and walk on top of water. We walk on top of water when we focus on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Number three, we flourish in ministry when we keep the focus on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. We should follow Christ by his example, integrity, humility, forgiveness. But as Peter was exalted and flourishing, he looked at the waves, maybe looked at himself and thought he had achieved many things. And he lost the focus and he began to flop. He began to capsize. He began to sink. And everything came tumbling down. But I thank God he was resilient. He was able to say, Christ, come and save me. And he came and rescued him. What makes people to flop? Number one, we flop when we look at man's ways of success. I have mentioned prosperity gospel. I have also mentioned Desire for position. Among the things that um, Mahatma Gandhi said are the greatest sin is success without work. There is God's part and our part. 
The name it and claim it gospel is a false gospel. We are supposed to do our part and leave the rest to God. The other thing that I can say make people flop is when they use their own means to achieve positions, to achieve places. They use their own schemes to succeed. God's work should be done in God's way. And God guiding us, there will be challenges, but finally we shall triumph. There are people who have used bribery, violence, and all these things. They may succeed for a moment, but ultimately they will be doomed to flop. It is my prayer that we will choose to flourish in ministry and leave the things that will make us flop. Tribalism, corruption, fighting, and things like that. May the Lord give us grace to flourish wherever he takes us in ministry. Let's remember, respond to the call of Christ. Number two, let's take the step of faith. And number three, focus on Jesus. And when we fail, let us always cry to him. He will rescue us, restore us to his fellowship, and give us another chance. May you flourish in your ministry, life, and family. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.